Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757 230 joining us online, welcome. We are in a series, this is actually part five of a series we're calling Making My Life Count. I think, I'm, I'm excited about any topic that uh, is so important about making our one and only life really make a difference and, and count. And so certainly that's uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and, and a key part, because we've looked at, you know, different things about like, you know, getting your values in line and and, and making sure you have a life mission that's, that has clarity to it. And well, today we're going to be talking about relationships that help you further your life mission. I mean, the truth is we need people to help us if we're going to really have focus, uh, to help us uh, have goals towards our life mission, help us have clarity. All those things make a big difference when people are involved. It says two can accomplish more than twice as much as one. For the results can be much better. In other words, he's saying is we need each other. There's, there's a place where in our life it's not all about just us working our way through life. We need, we need one another. We help, us, we help each other accomplish our life mission. Now, uh, now, the good news is that somebody who, like, not everybody's on your side, right? Not everybody's championing you in what you're trying to accomplish in life. And some people actually might even oppose what you're doing. They might be uh, a kind of against it. And uh, the good news is that when God sets his will for you, and he, he, when he came up with this purpose for your life, that there's nobody who can, who can stop that from happening other than yourself. Nobody. I mean, you just see this all throughout the Bible. There's, there's people that opposed Abraham, whether it was Abimelech or whether it was Lot. But that didn't keep uh, God's will from happening in Abraham's life. You have that with uh, Joseph. Joseph's brothers were against him. At one point, Potiphar was against him. But that didn't keep God's will from being accomplished in his life. You have the same thing with Moses. You had Moses who was opposed and buffeted by Pharaoh. But that did not keep his life mission and his purposes from happening in his life. You have David, who be, later became King David, but before he was King David, there was King Saul. He didn't want him to be king. He did everything he could to oppose David. But that did not keep God's will and his purpose from being accomplished in his life. But let me point out with those, those, those scenarios, but there's other ones in the Bible, that Abraham still had Sarah. He had somebody helping him out. You, you, you have... With Joseph, you had Joseph had his, his father. His father was a big benefit, was a big help. And then at one point, Potiphar was helping him. When that relationship turned sour, a cupbearer helped him out. With, uh, with uh, Moses, even though Pharaoh was against him, he had other people. He had, he, had, he had Caleb, he had Joshua, he had other people helping him accomplish the purpose and the calling he had on his life. And then with David, David, before he was king, even though Saul and all of his armies were against him, he had 400 men who had aligned himself and partnered with him and said, we will help you. And so the point is, is you don't get, worried, don't get all focused on the people that are opposing you, 
But you do need people that align along with you, that help you accomplish what God has for your life. And so we're going to look at some of those important relationships. It says, here's my, my, my sermon in a nutshell, okay? The quality of your life will be in direct proportion to the type of relationships you choose to build into your life. You need to build into those. They don't happen just automatically. You need to go, and, and a lot of times we just think friendships just happen on their own. And sometimes they do, but when, the kinds of friendships we're going to be talking about, the ones that help you accomplish your life mission, those are often ones you have to think about, hey, I want this relationship. I need to create that. I need to make that happen so that I can accomplish what God's called me to do. It's not just, just doesn't happen on its own. Three relationships that are vital to you accomplishing your life mission. Okay, the first one is, is you need to have models in your life. Models that inspire you. They, they, when, you're, when you read about them, when you think about them, when you interact with material, whether, whether it's in a book form or a podcast or a video or whatever, you get fired up. They inspire you to set goals, to go forth. It says, dear brothers, pattern your lives after mine and notice who else lives up to my example. So he said, hey, there's an example here. And he actually says a pattern. You know, patterns help out. Have you ever used, if some of you might sew, have you ever used a pattern in sewing? Yeah, right? I mean, if you, uh, like whenever I get like a storm door and I have to put that up, there's often like a little pattern in there. Here's where you drill for the, 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 the various things that you need to put in. If I put in a, if I get a door that's not pre-hung, I've got, you know, I use, sometimes I'll get a pattern that'll show me where the, where the, where I put the deadbolt, where I put the doorknob. Why do we use patterns? Patterns are helpful because they make things easier, right? They, they, they speed up the process. They, they, they reduce mistakes. I mean, patterns can save time, save energy. There's no reason that we should try to create and do everything from scratch. Every, reinventing the wheel on every single thing. That's not helpful. If you're going to accomplish your life mission, God's going to bring people into your life, models that will set patterns that will help you so that you'll be further along. You don't have enough time in life to learn everything you need to learn and to know on your own without patterns. You need patterns. You need other people. Says you, uh, Paul says, you became imitators of us and the Lord, and so you become a model. He actually uses that word to all the other believers. He says, hey, we need models. He says, be a model and learn from other models. Not only we can learn from them, but we need to be a model to others. And certainly that's something that we can do. Jesus said, I've given you an example to follow do as I have done to you. Now, Jesus certainly was perfect, and you don't need a perfect model, right? Nobody's perfect. That's often why we don't learn from models. We often don't learn from them because we go, well, they're not perfect. You know, we look at somebody, they're, you know, they, everybody has flaws, right? Everybody has chinks in their armor. And so we just discount them. Well, I can't learn from them. They're too young. You know, they could be my kid. How could I learn from them? Well, that's, that's your issue. That's not their issue. You, you, you can learn from anybody if you just had the right attitude about it. If you said, hey, I can learn from this person. Because we can learn from models. Models are very, very helpful in life. Models uh, have the ability to inspire us to set goals. In other words, they, when we get around and we start realizing, hey, if I set these goals, I could be there too. And secondly, models cause us to break through barriers. Things we thought we couldn't do. Oh, nobody could do that. You know, for the longest time, there was this idea that there, it was impossible to run a four-minute mile. I mean, scientists really believed it was physically impossible to break a four-minute mile until May 4th, 1954, in Oxford, England, Roger Bannister ran... A four-minute mile broke, actually faster than that, broke the four-minute mile. After that, within a year, 12 other people had already broken the four-minute mile. Before that, it was a barrier that could not be broken. 
You may know that just yesterday was the first, the, the scientists were saying up until yesterday, it was impossible for a human being to run faster than a two-hour marathon. That's 26.2 miles in two hours, less than two hours. They said, no, it just can't be done. Yesterday, it was broken by like a minute and 18 seconds uh, by Euclid uh, Kipoche. He, he's, uh, that's easy for you to say, right? He said this, he says, I'm expecting more athletes to run under two hours after today. He broke a barrier. See, models do that for us. They set a standard and they go, and, and then all of a sudden you go, well, I guess I can do it too. So they help, they, they, they help us to set goals. They help us to break barriers. They help us to break barriers. Models can be very helpful. If you can't learn from other people, it means one of two things. One of two things, if you struggle with learning from somebody else because they're, you know, they've got issues, whatever, whatever you discount why you can't learn from them, you have the insecurity problem. That's what the issue is. You've got an insecurity issue. You can't learn from somebody. Or you have a pride issue. It really comes down to that. And so that's only going to hurt you if you let those things get in the way of you having a model in your life. Somebody you can learn from. Somebody who helps you to set goals. Somebody who inspires you. Somebody who helps save you time. And they figure it out. They haven't figured it all out. What you do is you find somebody who, who is somewhere where you want to be. Financially. Or uh, educationally. Or intellectually or you know, vocationally or spiritually. Maybe not all of them, but one of those areas. And then you, you let them be a model for you in that area. And you can grow in that area. And it helps you to move forward in your life mission. So you need models that inspire, but also we need coaches that advise. Coaches that come alongside us. And they, they impart into us. You see, sometimes with models, they, they might even be deceased. You can learn from models that are deceased. That's one of the reasons I love to read autobiographies and biographies about people. There's so much I can learn. There's amazing models. And, you know, all great people had models. I mean, George Patton, the great military leader, his was Alexander the Great. Martin Luther King Jr., his model was Gandhi. Gandhi's model was Jesus. Every, everybody who who's, has excelled in some area, they have a model. But a lot of times they're, they're either too distant, they're too busy, or, or they're, you know, we don't have kind of that close connection. A coach will be somebody who comes alongside you. You know, great athletes, world-class athletes have coaches. People like all the, the Olympians. You know, by the time they're ready to go to the Olympics, they already know they're amazing. Right? They're already thinking, ah, I can probably just crush this. What's the first thing you, they do when they're going to go to the Olympics? They get a coach. I need a coach to bring the best out of me so I have even a better chance at winning in the Olympics. And that's true in, really in all of athletics. You see it everywhere. The people that have coaches in their lives. Tiger Woods has had a coach, not, not a caddy, a coach, helping him for the last 15, 20 years. You know, even the Pope has a coach. I don't know if you know that. He's got his own personal coach. He preaches sermons to him every day and, and, and gives him advice. We, everybody needs somebody that is close enough to their life. They, they know what, and they're committed to you and your life mission. They, they, they know what you're trying to accomplish. And, they're, and they bring uh, advice into your life. Now, we have coaches within our own church. Vineyard has coaches in our, um, in our leadership team. We also have coaches in our vineyard network, which is our small groups. And coaches will come along and they will help you. That's part of why small groups are so, val so valuable. Is they, we have people that come alongside and help you and, and are praying for you and encouraging you and, and drawing the best out of you. In the vineyard coaches, we like to say this. We like to say we help you with your roles, your goals, and your soul. <laughs> All three. I mean, how many people do you have in your life that are that are concerned about your soul? Probably not too many. For some of you, the answer is none. You really don't have anybody who's regularly 
championing your soul. How is your soul doing? I mean, you wouldn't even know what to say if somebody asked you that. How's your soul? My soul? I don't know. You know, that's actually a good question to ask, though. How is my soul? I can tell you the answer usually causes you to pause because when it comes to soul issues, that's not a speedy answer. That's something, that, that's a slow cook. That's something where you just, okay, put it, making sure my soul's good means it's, I got I to gotta dial back a little bit. I can't always be in the left lane going as fast as I can. And, may, and that's not, often that's not how my soul really gets recharged. But, that's, but coaches will help you with that. So, so, and we need coaches in our lives. The Bible says plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors. What's he talking about? Coaches there. You have coaches in your life. They succeed. So if you want to succeed in life, you're going to need some coaches in your life, people that, are, that, will, that, will, and that will vest into you. And we need that. You know, all of us grew, grew, grew up learning by what other people did around us. Not so much even what they taught us. But, I mean, especially as you're a kid. You just, hey, other people did it, so that's how we did it. And, and that can, as a kid, you don't get to choose the people that, that you're around when you're growing up. And so it, it can be, a, a, you know, it can be good or bad. If you w- were raised with high achievers, then, uh, then, then you're probably, you know, a high achiever. And you have some of those habits in your life. If you were raised with, with people that were very negative, then you're probably struggle with negativity in your life. Does that make sense? I mean, if, you, if you're raised with somebody who has like uncontrolled uh, uh, anger, you're probably going to have a temper problem. You're going to probably struggle with maybe passive aggressive tendencies in how you motivate people or how you interpret your, your, your process your own emotions. And, but here's the good news is once you get older, you get to choose your coaches. You know, it's not, it's not just what's ever assigned to you. You get to make a decision about that. And you choose people that will help you to grow and, and, and succeed. And you get advisors in your life that help you to succeed. Get all the advice you can and, and uh, the why and, and the wise the rest of, and be wise the rest of your life. And so that's part of our choice. We get to step into that. I want to be smart. I want to grow in that area. I want to grow from a coach. How do you grow from a coach? It's, again, it's not a passive relationship. It's not, it's not, it's not, you're not like a baby bird. Feed me. You know. And their job is to chew up all of the food and just deposit it into your mouth. And you, mm, mm. No, there's, there's something you do. You, you're involved in this coaching process where if you're going to get something out of it. How do you benefit from a coach? Well, one of the things that helps you to benefit is by you asking good questions. You're there drawing it out, pulling it out of them. They're the resource. They, they don't even necessarily know all the things that you need and what you lack. And, but you're aware of that. You're, you're realizing, hey, I, I, I have some areas I need to grow in to accomplish my life mission. And you ask good questions. The Bible says, uh, though good advice lies deep within a counselor, this is a coach, a counselor's heart, the wise man will what? Draw it out. Whose job is it to draw it out? The wise person, the person who's, uh, who's trying to get, get that information. Now, I've learned that with, with some people, uh, they don't have a lot of time that are in my life, and so I have to, I, I have to be quick about it. And uh, sometimes I just have a fast interchange. And, and, uh, and so I, I've learned, here's some questions I've learned that help me. Uh, I'll ask these kinds of questions. What are the greatest decisions you've made in your life and how have they affected your life? What are the greatest failures you've made and the things that you've learned from them? Two great questions. What are the greatest successes in life? Uh, how do you build relationships? I find that really important. Especially as you get older, uh, it's, you know, people move, people, uh, sometimes they just fall apart relationships for different reasons, people will die, and it's not easy to replenish those. And uh, so that's one reason. Another reason is, is the relationships are so important. We're talking about that today. We need, for lack of better terminology, strategic relationships. How do you do that so that they're fulfilling, that it's a good mutual experience 
uh, and, and so I'll ask that. How do, you, uh, how do you create? What books have you uh, read in the, uh, that have made the greatest difference in your life? How do you manage your time? Even better, how do you manage your energy? And then uh, how do you handle stress? How do you relax? There could be other questions. You, have, you, you, you do the questions that, that help you. I just gave you some examples of the ones that have benefited me when I am working with a coach, trying to draw out stuff from them so that I can grow. But you do need a coach. You need somebody who, 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 who's further along than you. Further along. What is it? So not only do you need a coach, but you should be a coach to others. Uh, but you so asking questions, and another one is by accepting feedback. Accepting feedback. Now this, now we're now we're stepping on toes, right? Nobody likes feedback. Nobody like. I mean, unless it's good, right? Oh, you are amazing, Pastor Andy. I mean, every sermon is just out of this part. It's just a phenomenal. You know, it's just I just just wait for every morsel, every word that comes out. I'm just like, oh, can this be true? Yeah, tell me more. That sounds about right. But that's not actually the best feedback for me that I, for me to grow from. Where I'm going to grow the most is from, neg- from negative feedback, feedback that I don't necessarily enjoy. It's hard to get that kind of feedback. It's hard to receive it. That's why you need to find somebody you trust, somebody you, who, you know, preferably knows a little bit about you, maybe even your life mission, and that you will receive their feedback. And don't kid yourself about it. If you're not, if, when it comes, that's not the time, well, I don't, I've decided I don't like you anymore. You're not the one, you know. No. Hey, I've learned a long time ago that I cannot control the lies people say about me. But I can control the truth. And there's a lot of empowerment with that to realize, no, I can control the truth. And, and sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes it's true about me. I might not even see that. It's a blind spot. That's often where it gets us the hardest, right, is when it's a blind spot. But other people can see that in my life. And they speak that into me. So finding somebody I trust, somebody that uh, I allow into that place. It is better to be criticized by a wise man than to be praised by a fool. Now, it certainly feels better to be praised by a fool. <laughs> keep, keep it up, man. That's foolish, but I love it, you know. Uh, it is a badge of honor to accept valid criticism. It really is. It shows something about your integrity, something about your self-esteem, something about your ability uh, to have uh, resolve some of the ego and, the, and, 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 and uh, uh, those kinds of things. So there's, a, there's a mark of humility to receive that. And like I said, it's also important to be a coach to other people. It's part of the gig. It's not all about receiving. You be a coach. Now, how do you, how do you be a coach to somebody else? How in the world can you do? Well, here's the trick. This is kind of like pulling away the curtain in the Wizard of Oz, okay? Here's the trick to being a good coach. To be a coach just means you're one step ahead of the person you're coaching. Now, you don't tell them that. Hey, I just learned that last week. You know, you don't, you don't say that, okay? That's, that's why I said that's the curtain. You know, you're the, the wizard kind of pulling the levers here. But you're one step ahead of them. That's what it takes to be a coach. What does it take to be a co- somebody's coach? Stay one step ahead. That's, that's, that's the deal on that. And then you can step in and make a difference in somebody else's life. So we have models that inspire us, coaches that advise us, and then three partners that help us. I need partners that come along. I need, I need people in my life that are walking with me in this journey, that support me, that help me. They're there for me. Two are better off than one because together, they can work more effectively. You see, we, we actually do better together. It is true. We need, we need one another. And so we need to invite people into our closer network and be open and trusting. And when we get hurt by somebody, somebody disappoints us, somebody betrays us, somebody, uh, you know, all these kinds of things that happen, our tendency is to recoil and be a little less trusting each time. But then we we end up missing our life mission. It's that important. So it, we have to help ourselves to kind of not hold other people 
not hold that against them what somebody else did to us, right? It's important that we, that we, that, that we embrace people in our lives. If one of them falls down, the other can help them up. But if someone is alone and falls, they're just going to not do well on their life mission. It's, it, it's, it's just too bad because there's nobody there to help them out. We need other people. Two people can resist an attack. What would defeat one person alone? A rope made of a three cords is hard to break. And so when we, when we tie in together, and really this is the purpose of the church. You know, a lot of people do not have these kinds of, of, of uh, people in their lives that come alongside and help them, partners. And the church is designed to be that partnership to stand with you, to work with you, to help you, to pray for you, to challenge you, to champion you, to, to help you in your, you know, setting your goals and encouraging you. Uh, somebody came up to me yesterday, uh, she's a small group leader, and she said they took their, the values thing we did two weeks ago, and they all sat around, and they wrote out their values and read them to one another and encouraged one another. They said it was, it was everybody was walked away, now I get it. I, and most people have never taken the time to do that. But when you do it as a group, all of a sudden, well, I guess I might as well do it. And then, hey, it's, now I have it. And when you can see it, it changes it. And so we need one another. Here's what the, the Bible says. We are all parts of Christ's body. That's the local church. That's the church. And it takes every one of us to make it complete. For we each have different work to do. So we belong to each other and, and uh, each needs all the others. We need, we need one another. We come along and we support one another. How to bring out the best in others. Well, this is important, right? If we want to bring out the best in others and we want them to bring the best out in us. Real simple, the best is to just to believe in them, to encourage them, to support them, and to trust them. That's, it's, that's what, what we, and everybody needs that. Wouldn't you like people in your life that do that for you? They believe in you. You know, they encourage you, they support you, or they support you emotionally, they challenge you intellectually, they, they encourage you spiritually, they trust you. Yeah, well, how do you have those kinds of people in your life? You need to be that kind of person to other people. It's that simple. You need to be that kind of person because you attract what you are. You know, if you're a dud, you attract duds. Okay, that was... That was probably worth the whole message right there. Just remember that, okay? <laughs> if you're a dud, you attract duds. You need to be that kind of person if you're going to bring out that, if you want that person in your life. If you're a, here's what Andrew Carnegie said. He said, if you're mining gold, you've got to understand that you move tons and tons of dirt to find a single ounce of gold. They, did, they had a, a number of mines as well as many other. He, Andrew Carnegie was one of the wealthiest men of the previous uh, century. He had at one point 43 millionaires working for him. And a reporter came up to him, said, Andrew Carnegie, how in the world do you have 43 millionaires? And that, back then that was like having 50 million. How, how do you have 43 millionaires working for you? And he said, well, you need to understand, when I hired them, not one of them was a millionaire. He goes, but we draw out of people, we treat people like we treat when we mine for gold. He goes, it's that simple. He said this. He said, if you don't go around looking for the dirt, what you do is you look for the gold in the dirt. And if you are looking for the gold, that's exactly what you're going to find. What are you looking for in people? It's easy to look for dirt. Ah, that's dirt. That's, yeah, you, you got, you're, a, you're, you're filthy, man. You're a dirty, you know, you're a mess. Or do you look for gold? Because what you look for is what's going to be drawn out of that person. And certainly we like it when people see the gold in us and they draw the best out of us. And we need to treat others that way where we're looking for gold. Around the vineyard, we call that looking for somebody's tent. Because we believe everybody has gold, everybody has gifts in their life. And, and, and sometimes we function out of something lower than that. We're kind of at a two or a three, and we're, 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 we have a good attitude about it. We're working hard, we're serving, but it's not our ten. And so we want to try to get people, we want everyone to serve in their ten. And that's part of the reason we do growth track. Growth track, and step two, which is today, 
is all about helping you discover your 10. You do some personal assessments. People say it's a lot of fun. Uh, we, we, we have, of course, we watch your kids. We'll feed you right after the service. If, you're, if you haven't taken step two, this is your next step. And it ties into all of what we're talking about in this series and it's certainly in today's message about learning who and how God made you so that you can serve your very best. And listen, it's beyond just church. It's, you live your life starting to realize, hey, this is how I'm wired. This is, this is God's design for me. And you start moving in towards that. Now, in relationships, they are so absolutely vital to us accomplishing our life mission. But it is true, there's one relationship that is the most important of them all. It's our relationship with God. He, he's the one, we don't just come up with our own life mission and then try to make it all happen. That's a recipe for frustration and failure. It's all about connecting in with God. God, how did you wire me? How did you make me? What is your purpose for my life? That's where real fulfillment comes from. That's where real joy comes from. So having that relationship is so important. Notice it says, now we rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God. All because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done in dying for our sins, making us friends with God. I love that phrase. We're friends with God. We come close to God. We connect in with Him. We say, God, you're, you're for me. You're not against me. You know, sometimes it's a paradigm shift for us. Sometimes we see God as distant, aloof, real busy with other things, maybe even a little angry, perturbed at us because we're not praying enough or we're not doing something enough. He says, Jesus says, that's not the way, it's, that's not the way God sees it. God says, I want to be your friend. I want to be your partner. I want to be your coach. I want to be your mentor. I want to come along and I want to do the very best in your life to help you do all the things you need in your life. And he says, and I want to, and it's often it begins with forgiveness. Where we just say, God, help me to start over. Help me to kind of have a fresh kickstart in this thing. Forgive me, Lord, for trying to do it in my own effort, trying to do it my own way. Listen, we've all tried that, right? That's why we all need forgiveness. We go to God and say, God, you know, I'm not, and I'm, and I'm never going to be perfect, but with your help, with your strength, with your guidance from your word, and the support I get from the church, I'm going to, with, with, with faith and with trust, I want to step forward in accomplishing the life message, the life mission, the purpose you have for me. That's the commitment worth making above all other commitments to God. So let's do that right now. Would you pray? Let's bow our heads and just kind of go to God. We're just going to take a moment and then we'll sing a closing song and then we'll be done. But would you give me just a couple minutes real, real, right now? Well, you know, I just... As I was about to pray, I just felt like the Lord just put in my heart, he wants you to ask this, okay? I think God wants each one of you to ask yourself, how is my soul? If you're watching online, same thing. How's my soul? How am I doing? For most of us, we could, we could probably do a little better. And so I'm just going to invite you to make kind of a commitment prayer at this point where you just say to God, God, I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't want to neglect my soul. I care about all those areas of my life, physically, vocationally, financially, all those areas, relationally. But I also want to grow in my spiritual life. Would you say that? Say, God, help me to grow in my soul. If you've never put your faith in Christ, that is the first step. That is your step. Or maybe you're far from God. You're distant. God says, I want to be your friend. It's time for you to come home. Then I'm going to invite you to pray with me right where you're at. Okay, if you're watching online, you just pray where you're at. To say, Heavenly Father, 
forgive me for trying to do it on my own. In my own strength. You say, God, forgive me for neglecting my spiritual side, that part that's so important. Help me to depend on your word more. Help me, would you say, God, help me to depend on your, your, the church more. That I don't just do it all on my own. You say, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Renew me, Lord. And then would you say, God, give me mentors in my life that will inspire me. Help me to have coaches that can advise me. You say, God, help me to not be prideful or insecure to not learn from, from people that you place into my life. Help me to be able to receive feedback even if it's not what I want to hear, even if it's a blind spot, even if it's painful. And when you say, God, give me partners that can help me in this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.